How's it going everybody? In this video, I wanted to shoot a quick video on the platform known as iOS XR. Some of you might be familiar with the platform, some of you, most of you probably will not be because it is not a common operating system that the average Joe will see inside of the enterprise network space. More of a service provider type of operating system. But nonetheless, I wanted to shoot a quick video on it because it is something that I'm gonna be incorporating quite a bit into a lot of my upcoming training that will be coming out here very, very soon. Considering all the new exams that are coming out, I'm trying to find the best way to optimize my time. So I figured adding in all the operating systems that I think you guys might need to know about or would have any interest in learning about, incorporating that with some of the training is definitely gonna be well worth the time. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration the initial setup of an iOS XR router. So configuration is going to be very similar to the previous video that I shot on the initial configuration dialog walkthrough on an iOS router. A little bit of a different syntax, a little bit of a different operation and things like that. I'm not going to go into all the technical specifics and you know the difference between iOS and XR. There's quite a few of them, but I'm going to walk you through the initial setup because that's what you really need to understand and know. Now, I'm not going to dive into how you upload operating systems and things like that because that's well outside of the scope of this video. I might do something in the future on that, but we'll see what happens. If you have something specific you would like to see done on the XR platform, in case you happen to work with the platform, leave me a mention in the comments below and I will do my best to try to facilitate that if I can support it on the software routers that I'm running. I don't actually have any physical iOS XR routers to, to play with, ASR 9000s or NCS. So with that being said, some things you might ask for like secure domain router or SDRs aren't really supported. So what I'll have to do is see if I can't find something to make that happen. But as far as I'm concerned and as far as I'm aware, there's no way for me to play with that other than with a physical router. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the actual setup of an XR router. So the, the setup is actually relatively simple. We're going to go over here to I'll go ahead and pull up the command line real quick. And here I have XR12, which is a brand new router. It has not been configured yet. And here we have the initial setup, right? We have the, the command line. We have the administrative user dialog. It says no root system username is configured. Need to configure root system username. I mean, it's very obvious that they want me to configure it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type in the username of Rob and the enable secret of Cisco and Cisco again. Pretty standard stuff. And there we go. So this is going to, you, you will have to use a username and password every time you log into the XR platform. Unlike iOS, it'll let you just drop in. XR is more locked down. I'll type in Rob and Cisco and voila, here we go. And the one major thing that I want to point out to everyone that's playing with XR is that when you're working with the XR platform, we do a show version, a lot of the same syntactical commands that you're going to be familiar with on iOS will work on XR. There's a one majorly different, very different configuration specific operation here that's different on XR than it is on iOS. And that is the two stage commit process. What do I mean by that? Well, here on CSR 10, when I went to go change the host name on CSR 10, for example, when I typed in the host name of CSR 10, when I typed in this command, I hit the enter key and the command immediately took effect, right? In XR, that is not the case. So let me give you an example of what I mean. I first want to come in here and type in the host name of XR12, okay? Nothing happened. That's the expected behavior of XR. It does not by default take the command until you use what they call the commit option. Type in C-O-M-M-I-T. Now there's plenty of options for this, we'll talk about those here in just a minute, some of those specific ones, but the commit command is needed in order for this to take effect. What do I mean by that? Type in commit and hit the enter key. Now you can see that the host name itself has changed. Now 
did only this portion changed. It went from iOS to XR12. Basic, basically what that means is in order for us to make modifications to the XR platform, the commit command has to be used to apply whatever configuration you want to apply. Now, one thing I want to be clear on here is it's a two-stage commit process. So you have your commit configuration, or I'm sorry, your candidate configuration, which is what I just typed in with the host name of XR12. If I was to type in host name of XRV12 and do a show configuration, you would see what they call a candidate configuration. It just shows me the level of the operating system as well as what it is that I'm going to be trying to apply. And that's it. That's going to be the, this is the little script, if you will, that's going to be applied. So I have the candidate configuration. Once I type in the commit command, then it applies XRV12. So it definitely does work. And that's basically the, the, the initial setup that you need to go through. Now, this portion right here has happens to do deal with the supervisor that comes into play when it comes to the XR platform. So I'm not going to get into all the details of the, the route processor and all of the the slot or the, the line car, the slot, the the port, the CPU, things like that. I'm not going to get into all those specific details, but that's basically how this comes into play. So. It's fairly straightforward if you're familiar with the platform, but I don't really want to dive into the the architecture on that right now because that's a little out of scope. Out of scope. What we need to really understand is the commit process. So, for example, when it comes down, it comes to configuring the router. For example, if I wanted to configure XR12 to be ready to to be ready to work with CSR10 and XR13, there's a couple things that I would have to do in order to make that happen. So let's go ahead and type in those commands right now. So in XR12, if I wanted to do anything on the router, I need to go to the interface level configuration and type in the IP addressing. Now, if I type in interface question mark, I have a lot of options available to me. In order to make this work, I actually have to type in gig 0000000. It's a lot of zeros, right? Well, I have two interfaces, gig 0000 and gig 00001. So I'm gonna hit the enter key and now I have to type in the IP address. In this case here, it's gonna be IP address and it's going to be, notice how it says an in, invalid output or input, I should say. I have to specify IPv4 and then the address. In this case here, I could type in 100.10.12.12 slash 24. I have some options, which says IPv4 address and the slash prefix, or IPv4 address and mask. So you can take, you can do the slash 24, or you can do a 255.255.255.0. I'm going to do that. I'm also going to type in no shut. You'll notice that the output there, there's nothing showing up, right? If we do a show configuration, you'll see that I have my candidate configuration. I have not applied. The config yet. If I do show IP interface brief, you'll notice that gig 0000 is not has not been configured yet. Now, if I hit the up arrow a couple of times, I go to gig 0001, hit the up arrow a couple of times, and then I come down here to this portion right here, and this turns into a 12, and this turns into a 13. I hit the enter key, I type in no shut, I do a show configuration. I have two interfaces now configured for iOS XR. So now I can just type in the commit command and you can see that everything pops up like it should. Now, one thing that I like to do personally as I'm labbing things up and playing around with the operating system and things like that, I like to go and use the logging console debug command, which whenever something's happening on the router, I will get notifications if I enable logging. A lot of times the processes on Cisco iOS XR are not enabled for logging. So you'll have to manually enable things like that. Like I, uh, OSPF and BGP and a lot of the routing protocols, they don't have logging enabled. 
So you have to be cognizant and aware that logging is not turned on by default. So you have to type in the log neighbor or log adjacency or log this or log or whatever the command is in order to get the logging to show up so you can see when processes are actually happening. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to type in commit here as well. And what you're going to get is you're going to get this config output right here and it shows you the commit changes, right? Which is nice because then you can, you'll know if you scroll back and forth as you're playing around with it, you'll notice what those outputs look like and you'll know this commit number. So if we were to jump out of global config and do a show commit, show configuration commit changes, or sorry, list, it'll show us what, how many commits there were. Now what's nice about this is if at any point in time you want to see what was, com uh, who typed in a particular command and what specifically was typed in, you could do a changes and then you could list the commit ID. So if you want to look at 1000, whatever number that is, let's say 100 million and three, you hit the enter key, it's going to show you what specific, what that uh, commit option had. So it's nice to know what that looks like. Now, this doesn't really give you any indication as to what's actually happening, right? It just shows you an ID. Now, there is an option we have the ability of doing so. I can type in interface, uh, interface loopback zero, IP address, uh, let's say 100.12.12.12 slash 32. I can come in here and type in a commit, and then I can say label, and I can type in uh, loopback, and hit the enter key. And what it's going to do is it gives me a, a commit ID, but if I look in here and I do the list, notice how it says loopback, right? So the loopback shows me that it's loopback if I hit the up arrow and I go to this and I type in loopback and hit the enter key, it's going to show me what was actually typed in. So you can label your commits as you're committing them. So you can say, you know what, this commit is me doing a BGP update. I can enabling OSPF on a particular interface or enabling MPLS or some other value that comes into, comes into play. Now, if I wanted to reverse a configuration, so if, let's say show IP interface brief, I have my loopback address, right? If I want to do a configuration, or I'm sorry, it's going to be the commit, the, there's oh, it's a rollback, rollback, configuration, and I want to say to 1004, let's say I want to remove the loopback, I can type this command in here, and I can go ahead and hit the enter key, and I can say label, I could say, and then remove, remove loopback, right? Uh, remove and loopback, and rolling back changes, there it is. So now it's been updated. If I do a show configuration changes commit list, now I have another one in there, and you can see it's a rollback. If I do a show IP interface brief, notice that the loopback is now gone. And if I look at the the commit changes for remove loopback, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to type in no logging console debugging, no interface loopback. So I was able to remove those commands and even though I didn't intend on doing this one here, but now it's cool because now I know what was what was done. So it gives me a, or if I want to do a show configuration changes all, it's going to show me each one of them and what it is that I did. So it's kind of cool in that respect because then it gives me a lot of output and helps me understand what it is that I did and how I did it. So what I can do is I can go do a show configuration changes loopback and I can grab this command right here I can go back to global config copy and paste it in exit out no law or um, logging console debug 
commit and I'll say label and I'll give the label of loopback and logging. There it is. Now it's 1007. If I do a show configuration commit list, I can see loopback and logging and I can look at the changes or commit changes for this and it'll show me I can look at the actual lines of syntax that were used in order to enable those commands. So it gives me some flexibility in terms of how I'm handling the configuration. This can be done for pretty much everything that you're working on in terms of the operations of the device. Now there are a number of operations that can be done and you'll find in later operations when we talk about how to enable routing protocols and static routing and other uh, start enabling more and more processes on the on the XR platform you'll see how everything is very process centric so unlike iOS like for example EIGRP for example or OSPF on an iOS router some commands are done at the global level some commands are done at the interface level iOS XR everything is done at the process level so you would go underneath say router OSPF 1 and then area 0 and then you would specify what interfaces are going to be in area 0 and then underneath the specific interface you might enable authentication or that you want that particular interface to be a member of a stub connectivity or something along those lines so you would have a lot of flexibility in terms of how the configuration is built and operated so you'll be seeing that more and more as we dive into follow on training but that's basically what it is that I wanted to go through and walk you guys through so you have a, at least a general understanding of what's going on with the platform and things like that. So if you have any questions or would like to see something specifically covered, leave a note in the comment section below and I will do my best to cover whatever that topic is and stuff like that. So until next time guys, thanks so much for stopping by and take it easy.